Bethlehem and not having room for the Savior to be born. We are reminded of the visit of the shepherds with the heavenly host of angels saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and goodwill to all mankind. We are reminded of the, mag the visit of the Magi giving their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And we are reminded of King Herod who wanted to immediately kill the baby Jesus to continue his own political power. And remember these parts of the Christmas story. We rejoice with the incarnation, the fact that God became human and lived as one of us, that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, so that Jesus could show us a life of goodness, grace, peace, forgiveness, and love. We are thankful that Jesus continued his three-year ministry of healing, of teaching, of preaching, of serving, and eventually sacrificing his own life as the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. Lord, we pray for those who need your healing hand. We think of this being Reynolds, of Trish, Jill Mellon, Ms. Eleanor DeMarco, Lloyd Singleton, Bob Eldridge, and Diane Paskins. So Lord, we lift them all up to you knowing that you will attend each one with your grace and care. And so Lord, as we look forward to Christmas Eve, we realize that it started on a silent night, a holy night. So we come together today, the last Sunday of Advent, to worship the King who was born a baby in Bethlehem. May this be a time to rekindle our faith, a time to reconnect spiritually, a time to offer love, peace, goodwill to all humankind. We continue our time of prayer as we recite together the prayer that you taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us.
Heavenly Father, we want to follow you fully. Help us to surrender all we are and all we have without holding anything back. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, choir. 
I have three questions I want to ask you today. First of all, in this busy life that you're living, will you take time and have room for Jesus this year? Interestingly enough, the story that we read in the scripture talks about a place called Bethlehem that was too busy to allow Jesus to be born there. Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 7 says this, And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she would be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in his swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. And I suppose we've all heard that story hundreds of times. You see, there was a census going on where people who were from that lineage of David had to go to their hometown. Well, Joseph was actually living in Nazareth in the northern part of Israel, but Bethlehem was farther south, and so he had to take his wife, pregnant as she was, to be counted in Bethlehem. It was just so busy because everyone from the surrounding area had to come, and the line of David was a huge, huge family line. And it's kind of like trying to get around South Bend during a Notre Dame football game. How many have tried that a time or two? To go shopping or to get a restaurant? It's just packed. It's busy, busy, busy. And so that's the way it was. I kind of look at that scenario of being too busy to have a nice place for Jesus to be born as our American culture. We are just so busy. Not only do we have work, but we also have all the other things that we like to do, be it hobbies or be um, getting ready for Christmas. And if you stop to think about it, the last weekend, Thanksgiving, you had family over friends over and you cooked all day and all night to get ready for that Thanksgiving and as soon as that was done you didn't even take a breath you went out early the next morning on back Friday to go shopping how many did that or if that wasn't good enough on Monday you jumped into Cyber Monday and ordered a bunch of stuff online we are just a busy people and then we jump into December where we go to Christmas parties, Christmas shopping, baking Christmas cookies, Christmas card writing, snow blowing, winter slushy driving, winter school Christmas programs and pageants to attend, Christmas cantata practice, and then more Christmas shopping. And if we have enough time, we might go to Christmas Eve service or church. I know I'm probably missing out a few other festive Christmas tradition activities, but it just seems that December ends up being a time of busyness rather than restfulness. And I wonder if perhaps less is more. You ever heard that phrase? Applied it to your life? And you take a few things away out of your schedule, out of your life, and then suddenly you think, this is nice. Life is still meaningful. Life is still good. Having less is more. Pastor David Jeremiah once said, all the Christmas presents in the world are worth nothing without the presence of Christ in Christmas. The second question I want to ask you is, will you tell others about Jesus Christ this Christmas season? A couple weeks ago, I gave each of you an assignment to try and do something peaceful to another person, to show peace. And so now, based upon the Great Commission to go into all the world, your neighbors, and share the love of Christ, the good news, will you do that this Christmas Season. Did you know that God had a marketing department? I don't know if there's anyone in here that's in publicity or marketing, but yes, God had a marketing department. Because to announce that Jesus was coming, he sent angels. He sent angels on the starry night where shepherds would be watching their flocks by night to say, hey, the greatest gift, the greatest thing is happening that my only son is, is going to come. I, I don't know of any other marketing company. I've seen billboards. I've seen radio ads, heard radio and TV. I've never heard of anyone hiring angels to do their marketing. But God did. And it worked. And it worked. 
Luke 2, 8 14 says this about that marketing. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby and keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those who his favor rest. Some of us have remembered it where it says, Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. In some translations, it has that. And when you hear that phrase, Peace on earth, goodwill towards men, it instantly takes us to that Christmas Eve night of the angel telling the story. Company marketing has logos that, that are catchphrases that we really like. And in fact, let me give you a couple, see if you can recognize or tell me what company this is. It's finger looking good. KFC. KFC. Just do it. Nike. Nike. Have it your way. Burger King. Over one billion hamburgers sold. McDonald's. Although when I was raising teenage boys, I thought our house was that one. <laughs> Tony the Tiger says they're great. Frosted Flakes, that's right. Are you willing to be part of God's marketing team? Are you willing to say to someone, come to Christmas Eve service. Come enjoy a Christmas Eve celebration of the birth of Jesus. I've got another interesting question I want to ask you as I was putting this sermon together. I was thinking about logos that depict what we like, what we buy. And I thought about your life, and I thought about my life. And if you were to place a logo or a phrase about your life, about your personality, about who you are, what would that logo be? For some of us, and as I'm looking out here, it might be happy-go-lucky. It might be loving friend. It might be a joyful person. 